What's up everyone, it's this guy, and today I'm posting a video that was inspired by a viewer named Nicole Best. And uh, she watched me do a picnic table and something else, and she says, hey, why don't you do a video to show me how to install a shelf or a bookshelf on my wall. Um, and so I'm, I'm accepting the challenge, and today I'm making a video on how to install a box floating shelf. Uh, it doesn't look like much. Um, it doesn't hold a tremendous amount of weight, but the beauty of it is, is that it mounts on the wall, and it just floats there. I mean, before you even put anything on it, it's hard to tell even how it's up there. It just kind of floats there ghost-like. Now, it does require some power tools and, and different things to make it happen. So, Nicole, if you don't own any of the power tools and you want something more basic, um, I can actually show you how to do a bookshelf installation that has a single piece of wood and these L brackets that you can buy at a hardware store. Now, for something like that, you would still need wall anchors and a drill. Um, but if that's what you need, go ahead and send me a comment below and I'll make that one happen. <laughs> This is pretty easy to do. You can do it yourself. It does require some basic tools. Now, one thing to call out though is that we're making straight cuts. We're not using any miter joints. True woodworkers out there absolutely love to make really nice joints and miter joints and stuff like that. And I hear you. Every box that I put into my home has a miter joint on it. Uh, but for simplicity, we're doing straight cuts. That would allow anybody with a basic circular saw to still be able to do this. And I mean, can you really tell that it doesn't have any miter joints in it? Probably not. As far as weight limitations go, we're mounting this with some very basic hardware. Uh, you can probably fill this thing with DVDs. Um, I wouldn't put books into it though. Um, you could probably get maybe 10, 15, possibly 20 pounds of weight onto this thing on this shelf here and the one above it. Uh, I wouldn't go any further than that. And the reason is, is when we go to mount this thing, we're mounting directly into the sheetrock and not into the studs. And the main reason we're doing that that way is because we're using finishing nails to hold this together. We're not using any hardcore screws. So the wood that I'm using is a pretty nice piece of lumber. It's a six foot long, one inch thick by six inches in width. Um, you can actually go with a one by four if you want. Um, the reason I'm going with the six inch one is just because it adds more depth to the shelf. Um, and it's, again, it's a pretty nice piece of lumber, uh, nice and smooth. You can go with a cheaper piece of lumber if you want, especially if you're gonna be painting it. Um, something like this would be ideal for staining. So as far as tools and materials, you're gonna need a level. It doesn't have to be this big, but some kind of a level that's gonna help you when we mount the shelf. You're gonna need a hammer, a square. You wanna make sure that your lines are totally straight. A measuring tape two wood screws or sheetrock screws. These are one and five eighths or one and a half inches approximately. A pair of wall anchors, these guys here. I use these a lot. Some finishing nails. And uh, you know the finishing nails when the head is just like a little tiny ball like that. And I'll show why when we go into the build. And then if you can, a tool called a nail punch. And this is gonna be important so that we can kind of sink the nails in and they're not as visible, especially if you're standing. A very skinny drill bit, like a 332nd, and a small shorty Phillips head screwdriver. I can say shorty, right? That's PC. And the final piece that you're going to need is this hardware kit here. It's got these tiny little three quarter inch by one half inch wall brackets. It comes in a set of four, so that's enough for two bookcases. Um, we only need two of these. Now the screws that come with it, uh, they're going to be okay as far as mounting into the actual wooden part of the shelf. Uh, but when we go to mount into the wall, we're going to be using sheetrock screws. Now, as far as power tools are concerned, you are going to need a drill, a cordless drill. Uh, it should have a torque adjuster on it. Um, you can use a corded drill, but you're going to end up probably boring a hole in your wall. Um, you will also need a 532nd or a 732nd drill bit. Now, most importantly, we're going to need a circular saw. Um, now, I actually own a miter saw which would make this job a lot easier. But this video, I'm intending it for some folks who probably don't have a miter saw. I mean, if you have one, you probably aren't even gonna need this video. Um, but a circular saw, just so you can make sure that the saw cut is hopefully straight. Before we use a saw, we wanna make sure it's set up correctly. And if you look on the side of the saw or inside here, there's gonna be some measurements. And the piece of wood we're cutting is only one inch deep. That means we don't wanna have it at maximum depth over here. Uh, where all of this blade is buried into the wood. It's gonna cause the blade to overheat unnecessarily. So what you're gonna do, and saws should be very similar, there's a lever in here. And we're just gonna lift, loosen the lever, and we're gonna lower this guard here. I'm gonna go to one inch. 
Okay, so now when I'm sawing, I don't have all too much of that blade digging into the wood. It's going to make it a little bit easier. Another thing is, is that there is a guard on here. And I'm going to assume that you're probably not a professional with using these saws. When I first started using circular saws, I would manually lift this and then make my cut. That's not necessary. You're going to leave it in place. It's a guard to make sure you don't catch your shorts or something in there. But as you cut, it'll automatically push the guard out of the way. So we are going to start off by making our cuts, well, measuring our cut. And um, you've got a lot of flexibility here. You can pretty much do whatever you want with these. Now, I'm going to kind of go with a kind of a standard shape on mine. Um, so I'm going to go to make my first one here. And um, I'm going to do it at 11 and a half inches. And that's because I, even though I say this is six feet long, we're going to end up with a lopsided shelf if we cut at the exact measurement. So we're going to go 11.5 inches. Once we find our 11.5 inches, we're just going to put a little mark here. That's it. Now you're going to take your square, uh, or if you have a T-square or something, you just want to make sure that your line you're going to draw is squared with the edge. And we're going to mark that. Now we're ready to make our first cut. Now a pro tip here is not to make all of your measurements all at the same time. And the reason is, is that if you do that, they're actually going to get smaller and smaller as you progress because you lose a tiny bit, little bit of wood every time you make a cut. Um, so I would say measure one, make your cut, then measure the next one, and then make your cut. That's the way I typically work. Another thing to call out is that some saws have a laser uh, to make sure that you're aligning your cut correctly. And you basically want to align the laser with the marking there. Um, I paid like 30 bucks for this saw, so I'm sure that every saw nowadays, this is like 15 years ago, so every saw now should have hopefully a laser. Uh, if you don't own a saw yet, when you go to purchase one, make sure it has a laser because it makes your life so much better. Now make sure your power cord is behind the saw and not in front of it. So now that we've done the first cut, I'm going to make the next cut. And again, I'm measuring 11.5. Then I'm going to mark it with my square. And then I'm going to cut. Now measuring now, I've got a, a four feet and one inch remaining. And it's about right. I, I did short myself a half inch on each of the cuts. Uh, what I'm going to do now is split the difference. We're going to cut this piece of wood right down the middle. So if I'm currently at 49 inches, we're going to set the cut at 24 and a half inches. Now, if you do have a miter saw, there's a trick that you can use to set on your miter saw so that every cut is exact. Now working with a circular saw, we're going to cross our fingers here and hope that this is exact. And uh, placing these parallel, well, right next to each other, I can see that this cut is spot on. So uh, good job, right? Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to join these together at 90 degrees. It's going to be like this. And joining them with straight cuts is so much easier than if I were to use a miter cut where we have to use a bracket to hold the corners together and glue and then carefully stitch them together to give you an exact edge. Um, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to put them together like this and then just nail them together. Now another cool thing is since these aren't holding up a tremendous amount of weight, we can just get away with using a couple of nails to put this together. And when we're going to nail them, they're going to go one here on the top like this. And then it's going to be one here at the bottom. Now we're not going to put them together like this because the weight, the weight is going to be on the shelf pushing down. So if we were to nail it here and then hang it, it would eventually just pull down and remove it. So you're going to go at it from the side on both of them. Okay, so we're going to just set this on top here. Align it as best you can. It's not going to be perfect. Um, and I do have a bracket that will hold the corners together while I nail them, but I'm not assuming you're going to have that tool, so we're not going to use it today. So what I'm going to do as best as I can is I'm going to hold that there. I'm going to take one of my finishing nails, set it by hand. should be wearing protective eye gear right now. And I'm just going to tap it in place. And just make sure to keep your edges straight. Okay, right about there. 
Now, when we get close, I'm not going to smash here and leave an indention. Um, that nail punch that I asked you to use is going to be used for that. So I'm just going to kind of seat it right now and then just add some additional nails. Now, if I did have that bracket, I wouldn't have to hold this with one hand. I could just control, worry about this, the nails, but we're not using it, so... I can kind of hold it now that the other two nails are already in. Whoa. Now you'll take your nail punch, you're going to set it onto the nail head, like this, and you're just going to sink it in. And that'll actually recess them in here. And this is going to be useful if you go to stain this uh, and you don't want the nail heads to be showing or if you want to paint that. Um, if you wanted to go a level further, they actually sell a wax stick you could just wipe across here and it would actually fill in that gap. We're not going to worry about that right now. Now that we got the first one done, we're just going to flip it over and we're going to add the other piece. And just like we did before, we're going to line it up. So we're pretty much done with the box build. What we're going to do now, and you're going to notice it's sagging a little bit, and that's going to be fine. Um, we're going to go ahead now and we're going to insert the, the final piece here. And just like before, we're going to nail it in place here and down here. So at this point, it's built. Um, the next step would be to, and if you wanted to, would be to paint it or stain it. Uh, if you're going to stain, you're going to need to sand these rougher edges here. Um, you also would need something called cheesecloth after you get done sanding it to wipe it down and make sure it's completely smooth before you add any kind of a varnish or a stain. Um, and there's other videos on YouTube that you can watch to do that. Or if you guys really insist, I, I can make a video showing you how to, how to really make this thing shine. Uh, most of the time, people just typically add paint. Um, or you could just hang it raw. A lot, some of the ones that I have in my house actually just gonna hang like this. And for the sake of timing in this video, we're gonna hang it like this. Um, the goal is, is that we're gonna level it, we're gonna put the hardware in, and then we're gonna hang the shelf from the hardware. And we wanna make sure that this is straight. So this is where the level comes into play. Now again, you don't need a super big level like this. Um, something about half this size would work great. I prefer the giant level because I'm compensating for something. So, once you get it leveled out, um, we're going to go ahead and put a line on the wall. And it's okay, just a little line. Now, if you're married and you're a gentleman, a fellow, I'm going to change your life forever. When you're doing this part, make sure your wife is home and make sure you invite her in to verify that it's level. doesn't matter what the bubble says. Make sure she agrees. And uh, once she confirms that it's level, then you can go ahead and put your line on the wall. If you try to mount this, Without your wife's approval, she's going to tell you it's crooked. So, life hack. Now, my wife doesn't know I'm doing this, so we're good. All right, so once we have it level, we're just going to put a line. Okay? You can't see it because it's so faint, but it's there. And I'm going to use that as a guide for when I drill in my hardware. Now, we're going to be drilling into the sheetrock. We are not looking to mount to a stud. And the reason is, is because this shelf is more decorative. It's not going to be bearing a tremendous amount of weight. Uh, if you want to mount to the studs, by all means, go ahead. But then you're limited into where you can place it. Uh, we're going to go into the sheetrock. We're going to be using wall anchors. Um, don't just use screws. They'll pull right out. And uh, let's go ahead and get on with the next step. So what I'm doing now is I'm placing the shelf onto the line that I drew. And I'm going to identify, number one, that it's flush the line and down here are matched up. And then I'm gonna select, and then I'm gonna select two points to put in my anchors. And it doesn't have to be exact, but we basically want them to be on opposite sides of the bookshelf. Okay, so now I'm using either the 532nd or a 732nd bit here. We're gonna start on the first point that I made and I'm gonna drill the hole straight in. That's it. Doesn't have to go any deeper than that. We don't wanna pull the insulation out. And then we're going to repeat on the other hole that I drew. Oh, that's insulation. This is the outside wall, by the way. Let's push that back in. 
Okay, now we can take the bit off and we're gonna place our Phillips bit. Okay, we're gonna take one of our wall anchors and we're gonna insert it into the hole and then we're gonna drill it in. And then we'll repeat with the other side. Now these anchors are weighted, are designed to hold a lot of weight. We're not gonna worry about that because we're not gonna be using a tremendous amount of weight on the wall. Uh, if you were mounting a bookcase that was gonna hold actual books and heavy stuff, we would be going into the studs and we probably wouldn't be using the design that I'm showing you today. Now we're taking the L brackets that I showed you and the one and a half inch wood screws that I showed you. We don't wanna use these little screws that came with the set to mount into the wall just cause they're not gonna have enough bite. Now. Now they will work to hold the bookshelf onto the bracket, but not onto the wall. I'm gonna put our wood screw in, and then we're gonna drill it. Like so. And then we're gonna repeat on the other side. There we go. So now the shelf is gonna be set onto those brackets. We're gonna take a pen now, and we're just gonna draw a circle on each of the openings on the L brackets here. Now we're gonna take that smaller 3 32nd drill bit, and I'm just gonna drill a pilot hole in the middle of that marking. And then we'll repeat on the other side. Then the shelf will be realigned back up here. We're going to use our shorty, we're going to lift it up, and we're just going to put it into the opening we just did, and we're just going to screw it in by hand. The reason we put the pilot holes in there is because it makes it so much easier to get the screw in versus it not being there. You probably can't fit a drill in here. Now I'm going to move over to the other side, and uh, we're going to seat this side over here now before we fully tighten either side. And it just makes it a lot easier to maneuver in place. And I'm gonna fully tighten both of the screws now. Okay, there's one. And just like that, we've got it mounted. And again, you could probably put about 10, 15, maybe 20 pounds, uh, but it's only held in with those two anchor points. Uh, but from there, you're, you're pretty much ready to go. And that, Nicole Best is how you install a floating box bookshelf. Good luck.